This is Mr. Burley at the York Catholic District School Board. In the last tutorial, well, we had a couple of tutorials. The first one, we drew this stuff here in a static mode. And the second one, we, we turned it on so that we could animate it much like this. Uh, I turn this on right now, something like this. I've personally purposely put something in here to, uh, we'll talk about it a bit later. Um, it's just a block just to show you that it can tell there's an interference between some stuff. So what I want to do now is I want to stop this. I want to come into here. And what I did do this is I put a break here. Now, initially I had the pin sticking way out here, and then I put another block down here and put a pin down in here for the break. But then I thought, well, why don't we just make it simple, keep it simple and have the break and the drive pin combined so we can pull this out, push it around, push it back in and lock it into position for safety. So. That's what we're going to do right now. And you can see initially I had this bar here. And like I said, out down here, I was going to put a separate one in. So instead of doing that, let's delete this and let's come into here. So we're going to click design, sit here. I'm going to slice it so I can see what's going on. And I'm going to come in, create a rectangle, two points here. Something down. It doesn't have to go too far down, something like that. As long as we get the pin in it, we click OK. Right click, press pull this. As I pull it out, you can see what's happening is it's taking on that previous radius, which is nice, but I want to have a new component, so I don't have to continue putting a radius. It's making the assumption that you want to do that. I was kind of hoping it wouldn't be blue, but it's going to be blue. So I'm going to come up against that face there. And front view, just make sure. Yes, it's sitting up nice and tight against that front face as a new component, so that's perfect. All right, so that's my breaking block. Now what I want to do is I want to put a hole here. So I'm going to come and sit on this face right here. I'm going to put a hole somewhere in this vicinity, maybe, I don't know, 10, 12 millimeters in diameter. Finish that sketch. Right click this one, press pull it, and take this in as a, and make it as a hole. Now, I'm going to come to this view. This is 10 millimeters, and I want to go in 10 millimeters. So, in theory, 20 would be good enough for my depth. But the problem with that is, over time, there's always going to be stuff built up in this hole. And as your pin goes in and out, it's going to be pushing material in here. So, what you want to do is you want to give yourself maybe another 5 millimeters just of clearance so that the material does have a room to does have room to build up. and Because that does definitely happen. So, click OK. And now we have a hole lined up perfectly. One of the things here is we're going to put a pin in here now. So, we'll click this face. And we're going to do tool here and we're going to put a pin. I'm going to draw the pin outbound for now. Right click, press pull it, bring it out. It's going to be a new component and I want to make it 20 millimeters long for the time being. So when I push this pin in, it should be flush with this surface and it should be engaged by into here 10 millimeters, right? 10 here and another 10 there. Now the pro one of the problems is this diameter and this diameter of the holes cannot be the same thing. There's different types of clearance fits. One is a slide fit where there's there's the hole is naturally larger than the pin to allow it to slide in and out. And there's then there's a position where the this the hole is smaller than the pin, so we press fit it in. That's designed to press it in and stay there. In this situation, we want a slide fit. We want it to go in and out. So we want the hole to be a couple hundred microns or maybe a hundred microns bigger than the diameter. So if the diameter is 12, we'd probably, in reality, we'd probably put the hole at 12.1 or maybe 12.15. Okay, we're not going to bother with it right now. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So we click OK. Now, the other thing is, if you if I move this out of the way, if I hide this guy right here, or it's hard to see the colors in the background, this pin going into that hole, this is a sharp edge and that's a sharp edge. So a couple of things are going to happen. First of all, you couldn't have any misalignment whatsoever with this rotation because the pin wouldn't line up. So, line up. so what you do to, to allow for a little bit of misalignment is you put a chamfer on the accepting part, maybe two millimeters. And now you can see what happens is this, this pin can be out by a, at least a, a millimeter and still contact that edge and drive itself into the center. So it actually low it's 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 a locator. It actually it serves as a location method. So you can be a little misalignment and still fit the pin in. The other thing that's going to be a problem with the pin is with a sharp edge on a pin like this. Invariably it starts to wear and it starts to mushroom, which means then it starts to jam in this hole. So to, to alleviate that or at least help with it, you put a nice radius on the front of it. 
I'm not going to put a radius on it just yet. I'm going to come back and put a radius on it a bit later. I want I don't want to put a radius on it until I finish doing my my um, assembly, just because I want a front face. So we're going to come back and we're going to put a radius on there at some point. Okay. For this time of being, we'll just leave it off for a second. Okay, so there we have a pin. Now let's finish the pin up. Let's come up here and sit on the top face. I need a head on that pin, otherwise we'll never get it back out. So let's put a, say, a 25 millimeter diameter head, uh, finish that, and then we're going to go here and here, and we're going to press pull it. We're going to press pull both of them, maybe five millimeters out, like so. Okay, and then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put another because I want to go in and out with this, I'm going to say, let's go maybe 10 millimeters and finish that. And then let's come here and let's pull that out a bit, like this, and click OK. And then let's go back and do another 25 millimeter on this face here, like that, 25. Or it can be a bit smaller, it doesn't have to be 25. Click OK, finish the sketch. And now let's pull this one out a bit maybe three millimeters. That's good. Looks nice, right? Click OK. And that allows us to grab a hold of this, spin it around, and then pull it, pull it out, push it back in. So this thing serves two functions, unlock the brake, lock the brake, and drive the system. Kind of sharp edges. We really wouldn't want sharp edges. So let's go and let's, before we move on, let's just go one millimeter edge here. Go up one millimeter radius. Nice. So it's not sharp. Another one millimeter on this side. Same thing here. Let's put a nice, maybe a two millimeter radius here. I'm not going to put a radius on there because it's going to slap up against that, but I am going to put a radius in here. You never leave a sharp edge like that. That's when you do sharp edges, that's where things tend to break. Now there's not a lot of force on this, but I would always put like a one millimeter chamfer in something like that. It makes it much stronger. If this is going to fail, it's going to fail right here. So let's say one millimeter. All right, so we got a nice looking little pin there. All right, looks good. Now, now we can start assembling it. It's ready to go. Now, if we come up here, back to our our joints and revolve our joints, our edit animator in our model, everything's working except that pin staying in that position. It doesn't know there's anything here right now, right? So, let's work through those. So, first thing I want to do is I want to ground this block. I want to make this block so it stays here and not doesn't move around, which right now it will. So let's go there, right click, and let's ground that block. So the block should stay there now. Right. And let's go and make this an assembly. So this slides in and out of here. So we're going to assemble, joint. We're going to select this guy here and this guy here. Now, I'm going to move, I'm going to click this guy here, and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, okay, I want you to line up with that hole right there. And you can see what he's doing. Now I'm going to move it to this view and click OK. And I'm going to right click that. And I'm going to edit the joint. I want to bring it back into the position. So right there is the unlocked position. That's where it allows it to rotate around. Okay, and I'm going to click OK. So there I have it. So now if I come up, let's play with the animate joint again and see what happens now. Animate model. Nothing's moving, which is good. Okay, so now when I hit escape, it stops at the spot I want it. So now let's, we got to come back in here now, and we're going to edit the limits to that we want it to move. So I'm going to go in the side view for this. So first of all, let's click the minimum. And the minimum will leave it there at zero. So the minimum will be zero. The maximum we, we want it to move would be to there, which would be 10. So let's go back. This You'll see these change all the time. So you have to kind of memorize where you are. Zero, and then this is going to be 10. And then the rest position, we want, we want the rest position to be out here in the same position, right? Zero. And click OK. Now let's see what happens when we animate our model, what it looks like. So animate the model. All right. Now I want to hit the escape key for a second. I want to go back in. And I want to change that rest position of this guy. So back to the side. Right now, it's at zero, right? And we got zero, we got maximum it goes to this is to 10 and then it rests at 10. So let's try putting the 10 at the rest position so it rests in this position, okay? Let's see what happens when we do that. So come over here 
animate the model. It doesn't know that that block exists. It, it's so you, it's just driving through it like it's nothing. Why is that? Well, because it doesn't know it exists. So why don't we go back into here, enable a new contact set. Remember, we did the contact sets back here. And let's tell that thing that, hey, you exist and you exist. All right. It's going to say warning. Yes, for sure. And now let's see what happens when we animate that. Animate the model. See what's happening? It knows that block exists. It's supposed to be in this forward position, but it's hitting there and moving the block out of the way. So it's actually working the correct way, the way we want it. It looks kind of odd that it's, 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 you think it would be out the whole time and then drop in. But so that's basically what that's going to look like right there. Okay. So that slider pin, if I animate that joint, you can see it goes into there and it goes back out to here. So it slides perfectly there. All right. So that's the first step. Now what I want to do is I want to continue on the other side. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to beef this up a bit. First of all, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to uh, extrude. Click that face. Press pull it. I'm going to pull him out a bit, beef it up a little bit. Click OK, like so. And then what I want to do is I want to bring this surface out as well. I want to bring this guy out here. So extrude this guy, bring him out like so, and click OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit on this face right here, and I'm going to put a disk on the front of it, click Finish Sketch, click OK, press Pull it, pull it out, and this is going to be a new component, and I'm going to do the inside too. And I'm going to click OK. We've got a new component. Now, I'm going to take, and I'm going to sit on this face right here, and I'm going to go and I'm going to put a bar, single bar, right here. Finish the sketch. Right click, press pull this bar. And the second thing is, let me delete that. I accidentally drew that. Press pull this guy and bring him out. And I'll leave it joined. And click OK. And I'm going to go now, and I didn't, you can see what I've done is this, these are not part of that. So I'm going to window this in like that. And I should be able to combine it and click OK. So now it's all one part. So that when I animate it now, if I come here and I animate this model, these pieces are not joined. So I'm going to go back a bit. I'm going to take this back. I'm going to go back to here. And when I click on Revolve Animate Model, the whole thing's moving. That's good. I want to sit on that face, but this time I want to combine it. Press pull, pull it out, and this one here, join it, right? Join. Okay, good. And now when I turn this, the whole thing should rotate. I could have continued playing around with it the other way and, and got it to combine, but Put a nice circle right here. And there you have that. It's rotating around because it should join initially, I didn't have it joined. Now, what the reason I'm doing this, I wanna show you something. And this is the nice thing, one of the nice features of this software. So I wanna sit on this face here and I'm going to draw a rectangle, two point rectangle from here over to here. And I'm gonna finish the sketch. I right click and I'm gonna press pull that. I'm gonna pull him up and I'm going to have it as a new component. And I'm gonna click okay. And now you can see when this comes around, watch what's going to happen. That is interfering with it, but going right through like it's not even there. And why is it doing that? Because it doesn't know it's there. So let's teach it. Hey, you know what? 
there's somebody you're slapping. So let's go into here, new contact set, and we're going to say new contact set with this and this. So now the two items are, war are aware, and you can see here it says it knows it's going to hit something. So right click it, animate model, and you can see what happens there. Now it knocked it out of the way. Now this part is useful. You can have things push out of the way. We don't want that to push out of the way. I want it to, I wanted it to, I want this to stay, right? Let's do it again. Animate the model. You can see what happens. Bang. If, if we brought that over here more, you can see how that would be useful. Maybe we do want to push that thing at some point. But right now, what I want to do is I want to say, I want it to collide. I'm purposely doing it so you can see there's an interference. It'll show you there's an interference, some problem with your model, which is really nice because you don't build something and then find out something doesn't work. You can see it right now working or not working. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go to this component right there and I'm going to lock him down. So right click that and I'm going to ground it. And now it can't move. So now when I go to here and animate my model, bang, you can see what happens. It stalls it out. It knows there's a problem there. So that's a nice, a nice, uh, thing to to have on fusion 360 it shows you hey i got a problem why is this contact oh that shouldn't contact so what could i do i could come back in here and say oh there's a problem there so i could come back in and go okay well wait a second why don't i come in here and press pull this down how far do i need to go where I, it'll not contact anymore so let's try that and see how that works revolve it animate the model is this going to work no it's still hitting so come back in right click it press pull it a bit more take it down uh maybe to 12. I don't want to make it too thin. Let's go to 12 and see how 12 works. And so now if I can come up and revolve my tool, perfect, nice. Okay, so that's that's uh, another nice feature of this. Now let's make it purposely coming. I want to I want to bring it around so it pushes the block. So I can do that by sitting on this face here. Uh, create rectangle, and let's oops, create rectangle. Draw here, click this, create rectangle, two point. From here, let me go to, let me zoom into right there. Finish the sketch. And let's see if we can get that to push off. Press pull, bring this guy up. I want a new block, a new component, right? Click OK. Now let's see what happens when we come in here and we revolve it goes right through it why why is it, it doesn't even know it, it's there that's because it doesn't know it's there so go back in let's assemble it let's give it a new contact set and say hey you exist and so do you and click ok and it's already warning you uh, uh -huh, it knows it's going to hit something it now animate the model let's see what happens now boom beautiful pushes it right off, right out of the way, which is what we intended it to do, right? Now, what we could do, do you notice how it um, it pushed it down? Let's try that again. So we're going to come back in here, revolve it, animate the model, push it off. Yep. So what if we were to go here and go assemble a uh, new contact set between here and here and click OK? Now it shouldn't push it down in, right? So let's see what happens because it should say that's a solid material. I can't go down. So animate the model, what happens now? There you go, knocks it right off. You see that? Now we could make it so that we could, we could actually take this now and we could create a, an assembly that slides only in one direction. We could tell it where to slide. So when this came down and pushed it, it would push it right over to one side. So you could see where this is useful in, in designing and building anything, automated cells, all this kind of stuff. You can see how this, you put this stuff all together and you can test it and you can get a pretty darn good idea of how it's going to look and how it's going to function. Okay, thanks for watching.